Skip came to uh, to the studio a year ago, May, and he saw this building and he said, we, we really need to do something here. And he's, it's his fault that we're, that we're all here together because, do I need a little pal mic? No. Okay. Because um, he, he started with this idea. He and I have been working on a, uh, a series of video uh, interviews. Interviews, and then it turned into a coronavirus check-in for anybody who just was feeling stressed about what's going on. And then it turned, it morphed into different variations of, um, of creative enterprise, trying to come up with uh, ways of dealing with the stress. And uh, we launched this idea of putting together a bunch of people who could address the fact that that all of these crises are coming together at the same time and we as individuals have very few tools to deal with these global crises and so we thought the first place to start is to send everybody to the end of the earth which is montana <laughs> <laughs> and that's not quite true. You, this isn't quite the end of the earth, but I swear you can see it from the windows upstairs. <laughs> uh, Montana is a strange mix of modern and the primitive. Uh, so I think it's a good place to start. For example, there was a guy recently who was in his cabin and was eaten by a grizzly bear inside his cabin. Wow. Yeah, it's a, it's a terrible story. What happened was a grizzly bear burst down the, the front door, stood up and said, okay, Alexa, where is he? <laughs> <laughs> Behind the couch, on the left. So in many ways, you know, this is a confluence. This is kind of a, a double confluence. For one thing, it's bringing all these amazing creative people together you know, in a way that is impossible in any other way that I can think of. And the other twin confluence is all of these crises that we're facing at once. So two years ago, every one of us was looking out our apartment window thinking, when am I going to see my family, you know? And, uh, and all of us were confused about the disease and about what's going to happen next, and are we going to survive this thing? Meanwhile, we have the climate change crisis, and we have one crisis that I'm really worried about that I call the, the erotic crisis, which has to do with machine values overtaking human values. Uh, a AI is, is a good example of that. AI is going to force us into mechanical thinking. And another crisis is the demise of democracy in our time. And all of these things are happening all at once. And every one of them is a global issue. And what can one person do, you know? And so Skip and I started talking about this. We need to do something. And he roped in Colleen, who is out taking a nap right now, but she's <laughs> going to be here in a bit. 90-year-old, absolutely fascinating artist from California. And we started doing things with her, and then Skip roped in Bob, and, and then we roped in uh, John and Sherry, and so there are six of us that have been putting this together for a little over a year, trying to imagine how can we create a situation where we can get a bunch of creative people together to talk about these things without some kind of institutional control. So we didn't want to be, you know, sponsored by a university or a church or a, you know, we just wanted people to be able to get together and talk. Um, the one thing that we have in common is that all of us are, are really into depth psychology. And it seems to, to me that depth psychology is based on the, the understanding of Carl Jung, the founding psychologist, who's really the first guy I can think of who opened the hood of the human psyche 
and was able to point out what these different elements are. And as I was mentioning earlier, the sculpture out here is about the, the, a model of the unconscious. And that's the only reason I could do that is because Jung said, well, here's this part, and here's this part, and when this goes wrong, here's what you need to do is fiddle with this thing over here. <laughs> and, you know, I can't say this for the rest of the present presenters, but I am a devout Christian, and it's been really important to me to take my Christianity and meld it into my Jungian understanding of the, of the depth psychology. They, they perfectly match. And it seems that religion asks the question, why? And psychology kind of asks the question, how? Um, what, we're, what we're hoping to do is to, is to, um, to ask, to, to lift up the question for each of us, what is it? in you that needs to be unfolded. Um, last week I was at a fast food restaurant and there was this guy sitting there about to bite into a burger. I said, wait, 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 you're doing that wrong. Here in Montana, we eat from the east toward the west, following the path of swim. <laughs> and he gave me the finger. <laughs> I said, look, I'm, I'm just trying to help you out, you know, with the locals. And, and he called over the manager, the manager said, you leave our customers alone. And I explained to him, shut up. And, you know, one of them held me down, the other pounded on me. This is why my face looks like this. <laughs> but, uh... My memory's a little foggy, so I don't know if it exactly happened like that. But aren't we all trying to do good in the world? I, I haven't run into anybody that's you know, just trying to destroy things. We're all trying to make the world a better place. And yet we have, we have these... We find it impossible to, um, to like make reconciliation with our enemies to be able to talk in the same language to, for instance, conspiracy theorists. Um, and this is a problem for all of us. And one of the things that we can do is work together to come up with ideas for how to proceed, how to move forward. Uh, we, we are moving into this new world. Colleen was talking about a new language. Uh, what Carl Jung uh, revealed to us is that we need a new kind of attitude toward religion. Um, we can feel this happening in all of our lives. We can feel the great changes. And the question is, are we going to drag our old prejudices into this world? Are we just going to try to go back to normal, you know, after COVID? Or are we going to try to come up with something new. And it seems to us that the mud is all stirred up now. And so everything is topsy-turvy. And that's the time to make changes. Before the mud settles. And before everybody just goes back to what they were doing before. And then it's like, you know, not going to make any change. And we're seeing, you know, look at all the people that quit their jobs because they thought, well, geez, who wants to do that anymore? Or I can work from home and be with my kids. And so people move to Montana, and the rent goes up, and <laughs> can't afford to live here anymore. <laughs> um, it seems like, in my mind, we are all arrayed in a big, huge circle. And each of us is right on the edge of the expanding universe. <laughs> We've got our hands on the edge. And... Our job is to try to push that out, to make room for new ideas. We were, you know, we're created by what I would call this beautiful, loving creator God that gave us the capacity, the very godlike capacity, to create something out of nothing. 
And so human beings alone are standing at the edge. And I feel like every time I push, the edge of the universe snaps back. What I need to do is push and then put an idea there. Come up with a new idea that's never been thought of before and stick it there so that when the universe snaps back, it gets caught in that place. And then I can move forward and do it again. And all of us are doing that. I think that's why the universe is expanding. And, it, and it's accelerating in its, in its expansion because we are generating those new ideas. And so here we have this moment where we can get together and, and share those creative ideas and inspire each other. So one of the things that was hardest for me to do in putting together this conference, this confluence, is not filling it all up with programming. Because it would be really easy to say, oh, I'll do this workshop on such and such. And it's really important to me that we don't put up ourselves as experts. We're just creative people just like you, right? And the only reason we're doing these, these workshops is, is to share the kind of creative process that we've become familiar with. And hopefully, you know, you take Sherry's bookmaking thing and you say, God, I can't do this at home. Now I know how to do it. <laughs> or um, Colleen's going to do this beautiful collage making uh, exercise with us. And all of this is just trying to unfold the, the magic healing power of the unconscious. That's what Carl Jung, his whole life was about. Unfolding the healing power of the unconscious. So I think of the... Um, the Gospel of Thomas, which is one of those Gospels that didn't make it into the Bible. There's a beautiful line in there. Jesus says, if you birth what is inside of you, what is inside of you will save you. If you do not birth what is inside of you, what is inside of you will kill you. <laughs> and, <laughs> boy, isn't that true? I mean, we, we, see, our, we see around us people who are being killed by the thing that they refuse to birth in themselves. Putin is a perfect example of that. You know, it's each of our responsibility to try to take that thing and bring it out. One of the themes, I talked in the gallery talk about the, this piece is called Hidden Meaning, and Sherry did one too, a better, much better one. <laughs> but it's got all these swoops in it. <coughs> So there's a swoop back here, there's a swoop on the street. Um, hope I've tried to set it up so you'll see swoops everywhere this weekend. One of the things I'm trying to get across is that each one of us is a swoop. And sure, we make, we, we're beautiful by ourselves, but we all connect in some mysterious way. And if you look at that, you'll, you'll see the words hidden meaning in there. The fact is that we, that there is a bigger dimension to our being when we are together. And uh, that's one of the things that, that keeps coming up over this weekend. Another thing is something that was, is brought out in the play that we're going to do on Sunday night. And that is the idea of tikkun olam. It's the, it comes out of the... Jewish mystical tradition. And the story is that uh, it starts before creation. Yeah, I read about it like on the internet. <laughs> it starts before creation when everything was light. And, you know, this being a Jewish story, there's a terrible accident. <laughs> Somebody falls down the stairs. And the, the light shatters into a million pieces. And one piece gets into <laughs> Everything. So every person, every event, everything has a little shard of light. And tikka mulam means repairing the world. And what it refers to is living your life so that you are always looking for that shard of light. Every time you meet a person, you're looking for that shard of light. Every time you come across a thing in the woods, there's a shard of light in there. And the beautiful thing about that is 
nobody has to put the whole thing together. It's not your responsibility. Your responsibility is when you see something, <laughs> look for the shard. <laughs> and uh, that's the work of Tikka Milan. And that is one of the things that we are trying to do with this, with this weekend. So we have, a, we have a, a certain amount of programming. And if you look on the back of the, in your bag, there's a, a studio guidebook. And the very back is a, a QR code. And if you have a smartphone, you point your phone at the code and it opens up a website. And that website that it opens is a schedule. So you always know what's going to go on during the next three days. Um, I was getting somewhere with that point. Anyway, uh, another swoop. Another swoop. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's important for us not to just fill up the the time with programming, which would be easy to do. We want to leave a lot of open spaces, and we want to leave a lot of time for interaction between you guys. So, like most of the meals, we're going to go out to restaurants like six or eight at a time, and those six or eight people get to have this really intimate moment. And you'll do that with everybody. So hopefully, each one of us will develop a relationship with each other person. And because this is all, almost all of it is available on the internet, you know, the whole world is watching. And it was important for us not, one of the ideas was to make it a big conference with 300 people. But we decided pretty early on not to do that. We want to preserve this intimacy because this is where the juice is, you know. <laughs> the, uh, the emotional connection between these people is really powerful. And people looking from the outside on the internet can witness that and feel the emotion. And you, you know, you can't do that with 500 people, but you can do it with 30 people and 500 people in a circle on the outside, because each one of those has a connection with us. So that's the model for what we're trying to do. And our hope is, of course, to do this once a year in different parts of the country. Um, so uh, I want to I want to leave us with an idea of repairing the world. That over the next three days, think about this central question. What is it within you that wants to be birthed? And every one of us has something, you know, a novel that we've never worked on, a dream to go work with inner city kids, um, you know, new idea for the garden, any of that stuff. Something that is trying to call to you to birth me. Um, and that is, that is aliveness. And it's after we give up that thing that, that we become dead people. 